day to all of you. We're here to discuss the two theories that we have in this day. But first, let me introduce myself to you as your reporter in this topic. My name is Melvin De Leon Kawan, student from Cavite State University main campus in Dang Cavite. I'm from BS in Criminology 1-2, and I'm here to discuss the two theories, the arousal theory and the life course theory. Come on and join me in this beautiful and knowledgeable topic. First, let's discuss the arousal theory. What is arousal? Arousal, it is physiological state of alertness and anticipation which prepares body for action. Arousal is being alert or coming up to alertness, having a high insensitivity, being awake and energized in a certain activity. It also means to stir up the feeling of excitement or actions we're going to make. That's the arousal. Next is the Yerkes and Dodson law. Who are the person behind in this law? Robert Yerkes and John Dillingham Dodson. They are the one who proposed this Yerkes Dodson law. Yerkes Dodson law suggests that there is a relationship between performance and arousal. The arousal is being made a while ago. It was said that if optimum arousal level which which is the peak or the top of the curve. In this um, slide, we're going to see that there is a curve and the top or the peak of the that curve is what we call optimum arousal level. The increased levels of arousal will improve our performance. Increased arousal can lead to better performance by helping you to stay alert, focused, and attentive. That's the Yerkes dodson Law. The optimum level of arousal. The optimum level of arousal affects the following. Performance, learning, feelings. As we have said, the increased levels of arousal will improve our performance and also our feelings and learnings. As the arousal level is increased, our performance is better and it helps us to stay alert, focused, and attentive. It was also said that the arousal theory of motivation stating that we are steered and driven to perform actions for us to maintain and to achieve our optimum level of arousal. So if we achieve our optimum level of arousal, we have a better for performance in every actions and activities we have. That's the arousal theory of motivation. So what is the optimum level of arousal and why do we need to maintain and achieve this? Optimum level of arousal, it refers to level of mental stimulation at which physical performance, learning, and temporary feelings of well-being are maximized. So why do we need to maintain and achieve this? We need to maintain and achieve our performance and optimum level of arousal so that we can perform at our very best. For us to be more comfortable physically, mentally, and intellectually, and so that we can experience balance within our body and mind. In this slide, we can see a picture showing that there's a party and concert and it shows that it maximizes the excitement of a certain person. When arousal levels are not in balance, we are seeking, we are searching in every activities so that our stimulation to elevate and maintain it are feelings or performance or excitement rather. Examples, when arousal is or what we call when arousal level is low, we can see in this picture going to party, concert, and having, with, having a mingle with friends, attending to concerts, watching action movies. These are the activities that can increase our arousal level. This is the activity that we can do so that we can balance our arousal levels. The next slide is when arousal level is high. Examples of the arousal level is high, reading books, sleeping, laying in a comfort zone, sitting and sipping a coffee, meditation, 
And these are the activities which helps us to in to decrease rather the arousal level that we have. If we have a arousal level, it's is too much high. We can um, we can do a, this kind of activity so that we can decrease our arousal level. In just simple explanation, when arousal level is too low, we are engaging in activities which will increase our arousal level. And when our arousal level is too high, we are engaging in activities which will decrease our arousal level. That's the simplest um, explanation for that. The arousal theory is, in simple and general uh, meaning, it suggests that we are driven to perform actions for us to maintain and balance our arousal level. So, at what, as what I've said, if our arousal level is high, we are seeking in activities and we are engaging in performance that will decrease our arousal level. And when our arousal level is too high, we are engaging in activities that decreases our arousal levels. So that's the main meaning of the arousal theory. Guys, we're done in the first theory, the arousal theory. And the next topic, we're going to proceed to the life course theory, the second theory that we have in this day. Next topic is the life course theory. Let's define first what is life course theory. It is a theoretical view studying changes in criminal offending patterns over a person's entire life. And it is also known as developmental theory. It is a theory that seeks to understand the multiple factors that shape people's lives from birth to death. Means from baby to old. Placing individual and family development in cultural and historical contexts. Or should we say what happened to their past and which is an impact on how they react and act in a certain situation. And also in their past or historical events that they've encountered in their lives, in their own lives, it either raises or lowers their propensity, which engagement to or involvement in crime. That's the life course theory the life course theory is proposed and the product of collaborative efforts of this couple that's next let's go to the next slide these are the two couples that we're going to discuss two criminologists named mr sheldon gluck a polish american criminologist and his wife mrs eleanor Torif gluck an American social worker and criminologist. They are the one who proposed the life course theory. Mm. So let's go deep to the life course theory. Life course theory is also known as developmental theory as what I've said a while ago. Because a person or individual develops at the same time, there are a lot of changes in his or her characteristics. Mental, physical, um, intellectual capabilities. That's are the uh, characteristics that the human have. Life course means criminality, dynamic, influenced by individual and uh, characteristics or social experiences. It means that the person, the reason why person commits a crime because of the pressure and intimidation of the others. Intimidation of what who surrounds from what and who surrounds him or her and there are times that there are experiences which has a great impact and greatly affects one's behavior for reason to trigger them and tend a person to do such bad things or should we say a crime there are life course concepts that i will going to discuss next we're going to go to the next slide changing life influence Changing life influence. As what I've said in this slide, person influenced by different factors as they mature affects the behavior. The changing life influence, there are a lot of people can influence us just like parents, friends, especially friends and peers which we meet and socialize with can also be the reason for our 
behavioral changes. Example, let's give us an, as an example. As a child, parents are the ones who guide us and it is very important that we have parents to support and guide us in the right path. But the thing is, what if they are too far or should we say they are not present in that time? Things can roughly change. We all know that things can roughly change when our parents is too far from us. Um, they are not. They cannot guide us in the right path. And there are a lot of influences will show in front of where and what kind of family does the child surrounded. If the child grows on the place like there are no good influence, as time goes by, we all know that the child will attain that kind of doing or that kind of influence that the, the people surrounding him or her can attain. Just like in adolescent period, peers. In adolescent period, we all know that we are influenced by our own peers or should we say friends. We have are the ones who have a big influence to us. Some cases, they are good and some also have bad. Um, we all know that we have a good friend and a bad friend. And simply in this concept, changing life influence, who and what surrounds us can influence and contribute to what behavior we can have or we can attain. So next slide is the problem behavior syndrome. This is the problem behavior syndrome. As what slide said, the problems does a person have can generate another problem. The more the problem that a person have, it can happen affect or impact the behavior that a person have. A problem affects the stability of thinking which leads to act and commit a certain crime. For example, let us give an example so that we can understand it um, clearly. A person was being fired in his work and can't even think or where can he get money to pro provide the needs of his family. What is the time that is the time where problems can create another problem from being fired and thinking about how can he or she um, how can he or she get money to provide the needs of his or her family. That is the time where problems can create another problem. Then in which being fired is work leads to another problem. As what I've said. Another example is a boy failed in a test. It may lead to a depression. Of course, we are students um, aiming for a high grade. If we fail in exam, there's a, there's an instances that it leads to depression and start to cut class with the influence of his peers and friends, starting to smoke and lead to drink alcohol. And worst things is to do such crimes or the worst thing is to um, take or start using drugs. In this concept, the thing is the problem begets problem. Problem begets problem. In which the problem can lead to another problem which it may lead at a worst case or scenario. As a simply, problem begets problem. If we have a problem, it can generate another problem and it can generate another problem too. That's the uh, problem behavior syndrome. The problem can affect the behavior of a certain person. The last two life course concepts that I will going to discuss is the age onset and desistance. These two last life course concepts are connected to each other. Um, age onset, as what um, slide said, the start of doing criminality. Means this were the start of creating bad actions or the early stage of deviance. For example, a child who bullies another child later on as you grow, he will carry the behavior of what he is when he is child. Turning in his adolescent stage will roughly affect this behavior for cause of what he attains during his childhood stage. For example, the child bullies another child, it affects it really affects the um, child because he is always being bullied by another child. Then the desistance, as what I've said, they, they are the age onset and the desistance is connected to each other. 
the while if the age onset is the start of the um, of doing such criminality, the disease stance is the end of doing such criminality. The disease stance is the end of creating such criminality. We can say that this is the realization happened to a certain person. Stopping from doing crimes and prohibit self in invo involvement in criminality. It is also referring to change in mindset and identify from being criminal to ex-offender or not being a criminal. That's the disease stance and the age onset. They are parallel to each other. They are opposite to each other. If the age onset is the, um, is the start, the disease stance is the end. If the age onset is the early stage of deviance, the disease stance is the past um, stage of deviance. That's the two, or the that is the last two uh, life force basic concepts. So, simply and general, generally, the life course theory this took at onset, which means the start of the research crimes, then the continu continuing of this criminality, and of course, if there is the start, there is an end, and which is it is the resistance, means the end of criminal habits or doings. Um, simply the start, age, which is the age onset, and to, going to continuing the criminality, the, and turning to the end, which is the resistance. Life course theories in general interconnected factors, personal, social, socializi socialization, cognitive, situational, so meaning people can commit crime it is because of their surroundings their surroundings influenced by others or behavior is a one factor why people do crime even at the young age and that is the life course theory and i hope that you've learned something thank you for listening to me and that is the two um, theories that um we're go, uh, we're, we've been discussed that's that's the two the theories, the life course theory and the arousal theory. I hope that you've learned something and I hope that you um, um, attain a knowledge about the two theories that we have this day. Thank you very much. That's all.